Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I uh, hope that all of you are doing well. Almost midway, almost midway through the uh, course. And uh, hopefully you're able to cope with the schedule, spend some time studying. Are you able to make time to revise? Little bit. Little bit, OK. Uh, but try to allot time every day to go through the notes, go through the scriptures. You may have a couple of questions. Write down some questions that you have. Because it's only when we take time that we'll understand the subject thoroughly. Otherwise, just for the sake of doing the tests and assignments, we, we might end up rushing. And that's not helpful. Because if you learn in a rush, you will forget quickly. Okay, So please take some time. And uh, you know, these days, we have online resources. You have the internet. You can look up the same subjects, look up the scriptures in different versions. So there are many ways in which you can meditate and study so that you can have a good grasp on the topics. So I encourage you to make additional time. So if there is a subject which only takes two hours in terms of lecture, we've stated, uh, you, even as you look at your course material, minimum four hours per subject, which means an additional two hours preparation as well as a revision of that topic. So we need to make time. If we don't make time, then we won't actually be learning. So uh, please look at your schedule and see where you can make time. And make it a point every day to sit at that time and then go through. Okay, So uh, try to do that. That will be very helpful. Let's get back into what we've been discussing so far. We are looking at insights from the teachings of Jesus. We've seen eight points so far. And in the last class, our focus was uh, more on releasing faith. So what are at least three ways of releasing faith? We have faith in our hearts. Now we want to use it. So how? How to make it work? Speak. Very good. Speak is one way to appropriate our faith. Act. Very good. So take a step. Do something about faith. A second way to release faith. Third one. Believe. While praying, pray with faith. When we ask believing, we receive it. So these are the important and very critical points about the application of faith. And I would also suggest, when you find time, to memorize a couple of scriptures. Uh, I may not ask you in the class, don't worry. But for your own sake, because this is a very foundational truth about faith. So these scriptures are non-negotiable. You've got to know it. Matthew 17, verse 20, just write down so that you can meditate on it slowly and memorize it. Usually, when we understand something, then it stays in our memory. If you don't understand it, it's you'll quickly learn it like a parrot and forget it. So that's why I'm saying read that verse again and again a couple of times. As you understand it, you'll be able to say it fast. It will become you know, uh, a part of your memory. So Matthew 17, 20, that is one. Second one is Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. You can learn it by heart. That would be very helpful for us. And uh, also learn Matthew 21, verse 22. Yeah, I think for now, these would be helpful. 
So let's continue. We will continue from point nine. Jesus taught us that faith can have measures, meaning quantity or size of our faith that either brings us results or it does not bring us results. So there can be measures of faith or let's use the word levels, levels of faith. So here in our notes, we have listed out a couple of these levels for us. The first one is no faith. No faith. It's possible that in certain life situations, we have zero faith. And that's what Jesus is talking about. So at a time when there was a storm, Jesus and the disciples were caught in a storm. They come with fear to Jesus and they wake him up and they say, you know, Master, we are sinking, we are perishing. Wake up. And at that time, you know what Jesus says? He asks them, this is in Mark chapter 4 and verse 40. He says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So what is it that Jesus is looking for in our hearts in every situation? Faith. He checks our faith. So the first thing he's saying to them, or, you know, we don't know what other things he said, but this is what is recorded. The important thing that he asked them is, how is it that you have no faith? That is what he noticed. That is what he's questioning. And he is also saying, you know, he says, um, why are you so fearful? Fearful. How is it that you have no faith? So it's as if, when we are fearful, it's kind of equal with no faith. So that's the response of the disciples. They had no faith. So is it possible for us to have no faith in a given circumstance? Of course. But what is the response of Jesus? He's not happy about it. It's a rebuke. He says, how is it? You have no faith. Why is he even saying like that to the disciples? Simply because... He has taught them so much. They have observed him so much. In every situation, they have seen him do miracles. And now, when they are finding themselves in a difficult situation, instead of believing God for a breakthrough, they are fearful. So he's just surprised. He's saying, what is this? How come you are so fearful? Why is it that you have no faith? Fearfulness? That something evil will happen, something bad will happen, we are going to sink, we, are, we will be destroyed. Fearfulness. And he's also noticing there is no faith. Why is there fearfulness? Because there is no faith. So this is not acceptable to God, having no faith. What was the response of Jesus? Rebuke. So today, if you and I have no faith, we have zero faith. I mean, just imagine, you know, like how you have a petrol tank for all your vehicles. If you had a faith tank and each time God looks at us, he's checking how much is the faith level. Right? Is it on reserve? Is it full tank? He looks at the disciples or he looks at us and first thing he sees, no faith. Your tank is empty. No faith. Why? Why are you fearful? Why do you have no faith? So we need to work on it. We cannot afford to have zero faith. Jesus was not happy with it. When we are fearful, it's revealing no faith. So no faith is a possibility. Let's see. What is the second level of faith? This is little faith little faith. There are certain in instances where Jesus says that, you know, um, that you have little faith. Let's read a couple of verses. Matthew 6 verse 30, one person can read. And then again, Matthew 8 and verse 26. 6 verse 30 and then Matthew 8 verse 26. 
uh, yeah, Mike, please. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown in, into the oven, yes. will he not much more clothe, clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Okay. So this is in the context. Basically, Jesus is talking about many different uh, things you know he talks about uh, having our treasures in heaven how the lamp is the body uh, the lamp of the body is the eye and then he also talks about god and riches he now gives insight regarding the dependability of god and how god is faithful and he says why do you worry so in the context of worry you know he's saying look at even the grass and look at all these other things that are uh, you know beautifully taken care of by god so if god can do that for uh, plants if he can do that for the for the grass how come you don't trust that god is going to take care of you right so it's in that context and he is reminding us that why are we fearful about the future why are we fearful about the things that we need? So when he finds that we are not trusting him completely, he makes this statement and says, you know, there is little faith. Could you please read that again, um, Prem? O you of 30, verse 30. Okay. Oh. From verse 30, okay. Yeah. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, yeah, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, yeah. He will he not much more clothe you, O you O you of little faith. Okay. So not trusting in God, being dependable, and not trusting in God being our provider and worrying, worrying about our needs, worrying about our future. He says, even the not temporary, but short-lived uh, creation are also being taken care of by God. But why are you worrying that God will not take care of you? Okay, We are made in the image of God and God will take care of us. So in that context, he's saying, oh, you of little faith. What is associated with little faith here? Worry. Worry. When we are worrying, God is saying, why? Little faith. You have little faith. Let's read now Matthew 8 26. But he said, But he said to them, Why are you fearful? O you of little faith. Yes. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. All right. So uh, in this in this version, we find that you know Jesus is telling them when they when they come across a storm, he calls them people of little faith. Again, it's a rebuke, and he goes ahead and does the miracle. So Jesus's expectation was that his disciples will take authority over the circumstances and that they will speak to the storm, which they did not do. They were fearful. So he calls them people of little faith. So it's possible. We either end up having zero faith, little faith. Now, if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, so this is just my, my thinking. Okay, I, don't, I can't give you scripture and verse for it. But when we say little faith, it's smaller than the mustard seed. So at least if it is like a mustard seed, then what does Jesus say? You can move mountains. But if it is not even up to a mustard seed, meaning it's really tiny, really tiny, we are unable to do anything for the Lord. Yes. You know? uh, Pastor, um, in the other passage where uh, Jesus says, uh, you of no faith, no faith. Uh, comparing like even the grass is being taken care and you are not 
believing that you would be taken yeah. care. Yes. So there also he is using fearful. Mm -hmm. I mean, why are you why are you afraid? And you of no faith. But here he is saying um, in Matthew 8, 26, mm. he is saying, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Mm. Uh, there also it's fearful, but no faith. Here, fearful, but all little, little faith. faith. Is it because in that instance um, where the grass is being taken care of, but uh, there the person is not believing that God is able to take care of him at all? Mm. Is it so? And here, uh, if we look into the verse uh, 23, then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. So mm -hmm. here they at least had a faith, like if we uh, uh, approach, like Jesus. approach Jesus, he would be able to save us. Mm -hmm. Was it that? That is why he used fearful. They were scared. But again, he used, he didn't say no faith. He said little faith. Yeah. So, uh, see, associated with what was their response, I don't think that is the determinant of saying no faith or zero faith, no faith or little faith. I think it was more to do with Jesus's analysis of their capacity or their level of faith. So, I think it has more to do with that than the response, whether it was a fear or it was a worry or whatever that was. It's incidental that uh, in certain situations there's fear associated, worry associated, but in general, it's the level of faith, right? The level of faith existing or faith being non-existent. So I think it's got to do more with the level of faith, uh, which is what he was indicating. Yeah. Uh, does that make sense? OK, great. Uh, fine. So here it is little faith. And I was just trying to tell us when Jesus is saying little faith, it's like not even the minimum has been reached, which is already a minimum. <laughs> Mustard seed is already too tiny. But little faith means it's just very surface level faith. Okay. So either there is no faith, there is little faith. Let's look at what is the best as far as God is concerned. And this is great faith. Who are the two people who had great faith? We've already talked about them in the earlier Centurion. examples. Centurion. And the lady who came for the deliverance of her child, the Canaanite woman, okay, whom Jesus told her that um, uh, the children's bread is not for the dogs. But she still con continues to persist. And Jesus says, woman, I have not seen such great faith. Great faith. So if we go back to Hebrews 11, do you recall Hebrews 11 verse 1? And we also said, what pleases God? Hebrews 11 verse 6. Faith, faith pleases God. So. Jesus was impressed. We want to impress Jesus. Yeah, all of us want to do that. How to impress Jesus? He takes notice of our level of faith. That's what he's looking at. How much is your faith? Show me your faith. If the faith is not there, rebuke. If the faith is little, question, how come? If the faith is great, I've not seen anyone. Wow. I've not seen anyone with such great faith. So that's what Jesus wants from all of us to carry great faith. So we've been saying that there are levels, isn't it? So in, then how should we, you know, how should we... Um, Manage our faith, make it go from zero to great faith. Is it possible? Yeah. yeah? How to grow it? Okay. Okay. How, how do you say that on the basis of what? By reading his word? Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm asking 
on the basis of scripture how can you say that uh, uh, by reading the word we are going to get faith uh like i don't know but i have read it somewhere that not read it but it's similar to that what i'm saying huh. that if you will be like if you will be like in jesus christ hmm. like okay i know I you were interrupted uh, but uh, yeah that's the correct that's the correct uh, scripture that i i was actually looking for all right um but anyway it's romans 10:17 that we can turn to and what you're saying prem is a summary of that mm. okay 10, so 17. yeah maybe you can write down that scripture as well we had a list earlier now add this to that list this is again very foundational so we need to know the scripture whenever we say how how can we grow our faith answer will be through the word of god that's the first one based on romans 10 17 okay and i've been asking us how can can faith increase and all of you said yes based on what romans 10 17 <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that is a that is a connected scripture but give me a more direct one more direct yeah faith increases so is there any scripture that says faith can increase yes so you're you're sharing the meaning which we agree with i'm saying on the basis of which scripture we said you know faith if you consider it like a tank there's zero there's little there's uh, great but can faith grow like that can it increase like that if you're saying yes on the basis of what hmm Mm -hmm. okay see all that is fine you're talking about incidents explaining providing a summary i am asking you for a verse give me a verse when you're saying something give me a verse why how where is it Mm. Yeah, walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, that's an instruction, all right. But is it directly saying faith can grow or not grow? Hmm. Connected. It's connected. Yes. Hmm. Romans one, seventeen. Okay, the just. Huh. Okay, righteousness shall be by faith. Okay, all these are connected. You didn't answer my question directly. I'm asking you to answer my question directly. Look, seventeen by. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. You can do your research. So this is how you think, right? Like. what is it which are the scriptures that are directly answering that question so there is a passage second thessalonians 1 and verse 3 can someone read it one and verse 3 we are we are bound to thank god always for you brethren as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly exceedingly and the love of every one for of you all abounds towards each other okay so this is a very clear passage isn't it where it says your faith grows exceedingly 
So the same thing that we are trying to understand, is there a possibility for our faith to grow? It says directly, faith grows. So how does that help us? It helps us know that even if our tank is empty, OK, let's say no faith with regard to the future, no faith with regard to finances, no faith with regard to um, flowing in the gifts of the spirit, no faith with regard to understanding the power of the word. Maybe that is where we are right now. But the good news is faith can grow. No wonder Jesus is looking at the level of people's faith and he's either impressed or not impressed. But the good news says, even if it is zero faith, it can grow. Amen? So that is a responsibility that lies with each one of us. We have to increase our faith. Our faith can grow exceedingly. Now, how to grow our faith? Give me a scripture based on what? Exactly. Whoever said that, thank you so much. We went directly to it. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if I want to increase my faith, what should I do? Read the word of God, study the word of God, meditate the word of God, speak the word of God. So I'm constantly in the word. What happens to the level in the tank? It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up because there is a possibility for our faith to grow. We don't have to limit ourselves to our current level of faith. No. Increase the faith. Increase the faith. We can increase in our faith. That's what Jesus taught us. No wonder he was assessing everyone's faith levels. Okay, fine. So we've understood that. And thank you, online students, for your answers as well. We had uh, some answers from Daniel and Anthony. Now, let's move on to the next insight here. What is faith? Okay, What is faith? So in what Jesus taught us, we recognize that faith is believing what God says. We have the example of the centurion where Jesus commended his faith and said, such great faith. I've not found such great faith. Why did he say that about the centurion? Because the centurion had an understanding about authority. You know, authority, he himself uh, was a ruler over a hundred soldiers. So he, he tells Jesus, if I tell them, do this, they do this. Come here, they come, go, they go. So in that way, Jesus just say a word and my servant will be healed. So what was he saying? He was saying, even if you speak one word, Jesus, it carries authority and I believe that it will do what you're asking to be done. In this case, it was healing. So he completely believed. When Jesus said, yeah, go, your servant will be healed. He just believed the word of God. And we read in that passage of uh, Matthew 8 that in that same hour, same time, the servant was healed. Far away, there is a distance between Jesus and the servant. But he still received his healing through the power of the word. But what is it that the centurion did? What did he do? Faith. He believed whatever Jesus said. So that's the point here. How should, how can faith come? Or, you know, what should we do to have great faith? Simply believe. That is the example that we learn from the centurion. But you know, this coming to the place where you can simply believe can be a little difficult sometimes because you're journeying through your questions, journeying through doubts, journeying through worry, journeying through fear. But when we arrive to this place where we are able to, like a child, 
we're able to believe God, where our faith, you know, it crosses that little faith to mustard seed level faith, then the miracles start to happen. But we need to get to that place of simply believing what God's word says. Okay, so simply believe what God's word says. And for us to believe what God says, first we have to know what God says, which brings us back to the thought of meditating in God's word. If we don't know what God says, then how will we believe? Many of us, that's the problem, right? Ignorance is the problem. We don't even know what God's word says, then how to believe? Know what God's word says and simply believe. That is what great faith is all about. And that day, Jesus looked at the faith of the centurion and appreciated him or commended him. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? No. All right. Let's move on to the next uh, point in our notes. It says great faith is persistent. So if you can turn to the passage in Matthew chapter 15. It starts from verse 21 all the way till verse 28. Maybe we can read the whole, the entire section. Yeah? You can go ahead and read, please. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same cloth courses and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meant to take the children's bread and to cast it out dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, let the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. If it would, if be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And Jesus departed from then, then and came night and to the sea of Galilee and went up into a yeah. mountain and sat that, down there. That should be fine. Yeah, till verse 28. Thank you. So we see the example of this woman who comes to Jesus and she has faith in her heart. But the situation was such that the answer was not coming. Faith is there. Faith is there. But it was taking time. So what did her faith do? Her faith or what did she do with her faith? She was persistent. Persistent means not giving up. Not giving up. That's another lesson Jesus is teaching us. When we say that we have faith, we've come to that place of faith. We know God. it is God's will. We should not give up. We must keep believing God till the answer comes. So first she goes to Jesus. And uh, isn't it tough? She goes, she cries out to him. She says, son of David, have mercy on me. So she believes. There's no doubt about that. But what is the response of Jesus? That passage says, he said not a word. Does it sound like painful? It does. Because... Faith is there. She has faith. But Jesus is not responding. Why? We've seen the reason for that. She was not a Jewess. She's not a daughter of Abraham. In another passage, Luke 13, there's a woman who receives healing. And, you know, Jesus says, daughter of Abraham, Satan has bound you. Because she was a descendant of Abraham. This woman is not. That was the problem. That is why he said not a word because he had come for the lost sheep of Israel. At that point, he was only meant for the people of the covenant. So there was a theological issue. 
you could say covenant issue even if he wanted he couldn't do anything but what about the woman she's persistent not giving up jesus didn't say anything no problem keep trying keep asking so she tries some more then what does jesus say see i can't give the children's bread to the dogs meaning you're not part of the covenant she could have given up at that point also and said what is this first no response now negative response forget it i'll go home but she didn't stop she came back with another answer her faith had an answer but jesus how about you know give me a crumb that's all i'm not asking for more than that just one crumb little bit i want healing i want deliverance for my daughter and that's when jesus said oh woman you know great faith you have amazing faith let it be done to you as you desire so it's because of this kind of persistence that she got what she wanted so many of our uh, requests to god many of the things that god has promised in our lives will fall under the category uh, where we need some persistence there are some where we get immediate answers immediate results you know immediate manifestation thank god for those experiences but there are many where we need some patience we need some you know they call it grit endurance if you ask uh, mountaineers who are climbing up to the mountains i was reading some statistics about those who have made it to the heights of the himalayas like the everest right so the numbers say that thousands of people start but then apparently there's one level they call it something they call it the point of death or some some such thing where once most people reach that height they're not able to handle the cold they're not able to handle the lack of food you know many many limitations are there by that point and most people return it's only a few who continue from that point and make it to the peak of the everest okay it was quite an interesting thought why endurance the capacity to keep going when the going gets tough at one point it'll be tough you're still waiting god where is the answer where is the result where is the outcome where is the fruit of my believing where is the reward but we've got to be like those you know the percentage that makes it from that point on to the top of the mountain this woman was like that she stayed she said nothing doing i am not going from here till i get what you know jesus can offer me persistent never give up so she was there she got her answer in the same way god wants us to be persistent if we have faith if you are saying we have faith don't give up don't give up till you see the answer like abraham right we'll talk about abraham we'll talk about persistence and all later also uh, but you're getting the point isn't it we need that grit we need that endurance that we don't stop don't stop till you reach the finish line so great faith is persistent now let's look at this last section for today uh this talks about worry fear and doubt so jesus is the one who taught us not to worry we've seen that passage matthew 6 where you know god depending on god trusting god for provision where jesus says therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat what shall we drink what shall we wear so what is worry you know worry is a human attempt to solve problems that only god can handle we we try to figure out we know it's out of our hands we can't handle it but we are still trying worrying how you know how will this happen uh, what can be done and then we are worrying 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 but jesus is teaching us and he is saying do not worry about many things in this case about provision what shall we eat what shall we drink you know what shall we wear don't you know that your heavenly father 
knows all these things. He'll take care of you. So worry is something um, that works against faith. We must be careful not to worry. So we're not saying don't think, don't have foresight, don't be concerned and plan. That's not what we are saying. You know, the same Bible also teaches us that we should ponder the path that we take. Meaning we have to think about matters, we have to plan ahead. All that's good. But if it moves into the zone of worrying, where um, we are just thinking how, 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 and we're not doing anything, it's paralyzing us. That is not good. Worry is not good. Okay. So worry will negate our faith. Then remember Jesus said, why are you fearful, O you of little faith, to his disciples? So what is the next thing that negates our faith? Fear. Fear is letting the circumstances rule, where our attention is more on the circumstances. And we are saying, yeah, because the situation is like this, nothing can happen. We are so fearful. We are not even considering God's ability, what God can do. We are not mindful of that. We are more mindful about how big the storm is, how big the mountain is, how big the problem is, right? how large the sea is. I can't cross it. The circumstance is before me and the circumstance is bigger than God. That's the problem. That brings in fear into our hearts. So fear can also negate worry, uh, faith. So first was worry. Second is fear. Third one is doubt. Okay. So doubt, this we see in the instance of Peter. Peter walking on the water and then he looks at um, the surroundings. He gets scared, falls down. To Peter, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 31, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What is doubt? Doubt is what questions God's word or God's ability. It questions, can God really do? Will he do? Can he do? Doubt. Okay. And when we let doubt creep in, what happened to Peter? We said he started sinking. So all these three things, whether it is worry, fear, doubt, they will negate faith or meaning they will destroy faith in our hearts. So we must not give a place for these things in our hearts. So for us to understand, right? Just, just think about this. The same tank, our faith tank that we spoke about, we're reading the word, you know, we're growing in the word. There was zero faith, no faith, going to little faith, slowly coming to that minimum. What is that? Mustard seed faith. It's coming there, but there are some issues in the tank. What is that? There are three holes. Yeah, worry, fear, doubt. Faith is rising, but it's also going out at the same time. How will it reach mustard seed? It's not reaching that level at all. So that's what Jesus is trying to warn us about and saying, fully trust in me. Don't give place for worry. Don't give place for fear. Don't give place for doubt. It will suck faith out of your heart. How does it happen? How do these three things happen to us? Yeah, we look at circumstances. Then something that you said? Okay, life's challenges, circumstances. Right. When we're not reading the word. See, as long as Peter was fixed uh, Peter fixed his eyes on Jesus, he was fine. But it's when he took his eyes off of Jesus that the issue happened. In the same way, when we are focused on the word, we will remain in faith. But the moment we shift our eyes from the word and give attention to other things, then we may encounter the situation. Okay, So we need to be fixed on the word of God and uh, have a good grip on the word of God. 
Sure. So with this, we will stop for today. If you have anything to discuss, we can take it up. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next topic on Friday, which is faith in the Old Testament. All right, so for everything that concerns us, make sure that your uh, faith tank is full and overflowing with no leakages. That's the best way to see God's promises come to pass in our lives. Uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, one of us here on campus, somebody who has not yet prayed before, would you please take the mic and lead us in prayer? Take a step of faith. Please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the studies and we learn about faith, how to grow and everything. Thank you, Father, for these classes. Uh, we surrender all to your hands. Father, help us to grow in faith. We Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you all on Friday. We'll continue to talk about faith.